standing up when apparently others won't. This is According to Callus. And hopefully by now you've recognized I changed up the intro music again. For those of you that are ultra aware, uh, that actually was one of the earliest versions of the intro bumper music, if you will, that I tried. Um, I'm going to keep trying different things for a little while. Um, just want to see what I like, I guess. Uh, today's episode, if you <laughs> might have guessed, is going to be a little different than some of the ones I've done in the past. I'm going to basically use this episode as a rebuttal episode. You see, I am a member of the TNM. I don't speak on their behalf, and I certainly don't speak for Daniel Miller. However, I do support what they're trying to do. I do think that it is a good idea. And to that end, I get negative comments. I get responses, which are, uh, shall we say, mm, less than encouraging. So I want to use this episode to rebut some of the most common concerns or complaints. And with that, before I get into that, let me remind you, you can like, share, subscribe, follow, and if you're feeling particularly froggy, go ahead and comment and or rate said show. And here we go. All right. So we talk about Texit. The idea, will Texit work? And it's usually put to you as, well, Texit will fail or Texas won't work. Okay. Texas can't work. All right. Uh, I, what are you trying to say it can't or won't do is my first question. So, well, let's define what it means to text it, right? Let, let's define what is it we're looking to accomplish. To that end, in my mind, text it, first and foremost, is wanting for the people the residents, the citizens of Texas to determine whether or not they want to stay part of the union or if they want to declare their independence. It's called self-determination. So if that's step one, I'm really not sure what your concern is there. I'm really not sure what you think we're going to fail there with. I'm really not sure what your concerns are. Because if you're right... If you think that this is doomed to failure or it won't possibly accomplish whatever nebulous goals you've associated with, well, then you shouldn't care if it goes to a vote, right? You, you shouldn't care if the people get an opportunity to be heard on this subject because clearly they're going to say, well, no, we don't want to do this. Clearly, it's better that we stay in the union. Clearly, they don't they won't buy it, right? So you would want for that referendum to go forward. You would want to support that this noxious idea that you see of Texan get shot down. It would be in your best interest as an opponent to Texan to put it on the ballot, to prove yourself right, to prove us all wrong. But you don't do that. So I, the... What it, What is your term? What is it you're calling a failure? The fact that we can't get it on the ballot or the fact that if it gets on the ballot, we're doomed to fail because the people aren't interested in it. I, I call bunk on both of those because if you were so concerned about it, you wouldn't, uh, or I should say, if you were so sure about it, you wouldn't be opposed to it. You wouldn't fight it tooth or nail. You wouldn't you know, be so negative. You would like it to go forward so that, you know, people would look silly. It would get voted down. Okay. So the next thing I hear, it's just not practical. It's not going to give us what we want. We're not certain that we're, we're going to improve the situation. Okay. What's well, not practical? That a group of people should declare their independence. That a group of people should say that they don't support the continued government that we have. Um, what's not practical? The fact that uh, the government that we have doesn't even follow the rules that were set up. I'm, I'm, I'm not following you here. 
I, I, I fail to see that you're poo-pooing an option before it's even explored. And again, I go back to the first thing. We're going to define the term. Tax it, as it stands right now, is merely asking for people to be able to have a right to speak on the issue. When and if we get the right to speak on the issue and we come out in support of it, well, then we will request, demand, require our elected representatives to follow through on that, right? I mean, if we're a representative republic, if we're a democracy, what the people want should determine what the government does, right? I mean, that's what we're taught. That's that's what we're supposed to believe. So again... Um, it not buying it. Okay. As far as the next step in practicality. Okay. So say we vote, say we win, Texas passes and we go to the legislature and the legislature starts working on how do we separate? Okay. Well, this has happened before. Germany was one country, it became two countries, and now it's one country again. Czechoslovakia was once once one country, it is now two countries. Yugoslavia was one country, and is now seven countries. Now, that was quite a bit more messy, but it did happen. Uh, The Soviet Union is now 11 to 13 different countries, depending on who's counting and how they're counting them. Uh, It happens. Right? Korea is two different countries. Vietnam was one country, then became two countries, and now one country. Now, you don't have to like how any of these countries are being run. You don't have to approve of how that happened, but it does happen. I mean, the Sudan's now two separate countries, right? There's the South Sudan. So it can and does happen. Now, what happens with the outcome is largely determined on who wins. Good point. Okay, so it is practical. It has happened. There's no magical fairy dust that means it's going to be oh so much better or oh so much worse. That's the hard work. That's the effort you have to put in. So again, that's that's not a valid complaint. The next thing, fear of outcome, right? I, I would lump most of these into, well, we don't have the same people we once did. Okay, fair enough. Um, we can't get a better constitution than what we already have. Okay. Maybe, um, or, um, the feds are never going to let us leave. So those are the three primary, uh, people that doubt the outcome. Okay. So let's, let's take them one at a time. One, the people are not the same as they once were. You're absolutely right. Now, these people often then throw in that we have to do education. We have to send them to this class. We have to, you know, (laughs) I I really, they think that Hillsdale College or that the Patriot Academy or that some other program is going to fix this for us. They, They think that just people being educated to the Constitution is sufficient. That, that's my interpretation. Now, let me give you the sad truth. Yes, but. Yes, getting that education, whether it's from the Heritage Foundation, Hillsdale College, or whatever other source, is important, is a necessary step to fixing the problem. But you have to take action. So, do you have another 30 years to where you can educate two generations of people to stand up for their own rights before the entire country disintegrates into a mess? I don't know. I really doubt it, but okay. So you're going to invest all this time and money to counterdict what government education has been doing for 150 years. My response is, I agree we should be doing that. But if you think that's going to solve the problem, you're sadly mistaken. If you think that's enough, you're sadly mistaken. Okay, the second thing, right? <clears throat> Those people that we have, uh, they're they're not going to go along with us. Okay, it's true. So what I would say is, 
if the people in Texas that don't want Texas independence, they can leave. I understand New Mexico is lovely this time of year. Perhaps they can go back to California. Or if they're not originally from California, they can go there now. They'll be more at home with the big government, mm, tyrannical dictates of a socialistic uh, system there than they would be in Texas. And yes, I know. It's not a perfect panacea. It's not going to solve every problem. It's not going to undo everything. But that's not the goal. The goal is to create an independent country. The goal is to say, we're not being governed well by a group of people that are 2,000 miles away. We acknowledge that the people that are in the state aren't doing that great of job of governing us right now. However, we think that we can trust, change, or improve the people in Austin much easier than we can fix the problems in D.C. So why not look at the idea of independence? And then, of course, the last thing is, they're not going to let you. Okay, how are they going to do that? I want you to be honest with yourself. Do you really think a cross-dressing general or somebody that puts on puppy faces is going to be super effective at putting down an insurrection? I mean, that's what you're calling this, right? You're saying the fact that we want to leave is going to bring about a civil war, a.k.a. an insurrection. Do you really think the people in Fort Hood that are Texans by mm, proxy, do you think they're going to go along with this? Do you think we're going to have the same outcome that we had once before? Do you really think there's anybody that's going to draw blood over Texas going its own way? Willingly. I have my doubts. The real question is, how are they going to stop us? If we were just to assert our state sovereignty and say, get out, you have no business being here, you don't have jurisdiction nor authority, that would be a step in the right direction. But again, you're right. We have feckless leadership both in Austin and D.C. And it's unlikely that our leadership in Austin is going to have the stones to pull this off. But if we were to, I don't know, be successful in getting the referendum out to the we the people get to speak on, do we want to declare independence or not? I suspect that some of those people that lack a spine right now might grow one, especially if they think it's going to benefit them long term. I mean, honestly... Everything about politics is about benefiting the person that's in elected office. They won't admit it. They they will deny it. But I mean, honestly, if I were to successfully run for office, my values would be what's best for my state and what's going to be the most liberty-orientated outcome. That's what would benefit me. But somebody else has different values than I do. They may be looking at their pocketbook. They may be looking at their... mm, monuments that are going to be built in their name self-interest my self-interest is i want to leave my state my country better for my children than what it was when i got it but i don't know that everybody sees the world the way i do in fact i imagine the majority don't but why would i suggest that it isn't possible that we can agree on an outcome giving different people different uh, benefits So I go back and I say, how are they going to stop us? And what are they going to do about it? I mean, we fled Afghanistan. With like, I'm not buying it. Do you really think that mm, 10% of the Texans that are here, the Texians, the Tejanos, can't push back and hold off? The U.S. military that really has zero interest in fighting in Texas? Now, I don't want that to happen, but the reality is somebody's going to want it. Somebody's going to push it for it. Somebody's going to try it. But do you really think that they're going to be successful? That's fear. I don't want to live under fear. I don't, I'm not going to be motivated by fear. I understand the world I live in and I don't have to like it, but I got to look at ways to improve it. Oh, I can sit on the sidelines and gripe and moan and complain, but if I'm not actively trying to fix it or improve it, 
then I'm nothing but a hmm, waste of space. And then there's the people that just refuse to try anything. To them, I say, put down the black pill. You're right. Everything is broken in these United States. The government's irredeemable. The SCOTUS is a joke. Congress can't be trusted. The president isn't. That can all be true. And you can say the same things. Well, you know, Austin's run by three people and they don't have any vested interest in doing what's best for Texas. Okay, maybe that's true. So you're taking your black pill. You're going to say nothing matters. We can't change anything and there's nothing to be done about it. We're just going to accept our fate. Well, I'm not going to sign off on that nihilistic view. I'm not going to say, well, because so many things are bad or so many things are out of whack or so many things are not the way they should be, that I'm just going to give up and roll over and play dead. Or I'm not going to pretend that this isn't something that we can address. This is a situation where certain people will say, well, we have to do something and they just swing out you know, wildly at every idea that comes down the pike. Then there are those that say, well, there's nothing to do, so I'm not going to do, and I'm just going to enjoy what little time I have left before I die. They're going to curl up in a ball. I'm not on board with either one of those. I believe education makes a difference. I believe activism makes a difference, which is why I try and partake in both of those. But I'm here to tell you that just taking the step towards a referendum on Texas brings about tons of time and opportunities for education. It brings about opportunities for activism. And and it's going to put the ball on the field and both teams are going to have to try and take possession of it to use a bad sports metaphor here. But if you're not willing to address these issues, if you're not willing to get involved, if, if you're just willing to say all is lost, then we don't need you. Just go stay on the sidelines, stay in your house, do nothing. It's okay. Enjoy your chains. Now, for those of you that would actively oppose us, those of you who really think that staying in the union is the best solution, you know, you're going to give me the re- remainder rhetoric of we're better together. Okay. I'm willing to hear you out. Maybe you've got a better answer. Maybe you know something I don't know. So put it out there. Argue for your cause. Fight the good fight. You know, I know social media likes to pretend that this isn't a thing. They, they're, they're trying to mm, just not give it access to the airwaves. They're all about Ukraine being for the Ukrainians. They're all about Poland being for the Polish. They're all about the Czechs separating from the Slovakians. Hmm? They're, they're all about people having their right to individual determination, right? Or national sovereignty. Unless, of course, it's the United States or Texas for that matter. And then, well, no, we have to accept the, for lack of a better term, an invasion of millions of people from foreign countries that come here to resettle our country, to change things around. Well, we can't do anything about that. We have to accept that as our fate. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take the black pill. You go ahead and take that black pill if you want, but I think there's something that can be done. I think there's something that should be done. And I'm here to tell you that whether or not you think Texas is the proper solution is irrelevant. You have to be willing to acknowledge it as a solution. Maybe you think your solution's better. Maybe you think that constitutional amendment's going to fix everything. Maybe you think a convention of states is going to fix everything. I say good luck to you. Maybe you think that if we will just enforce the Constitution, if we just get the SCOTUS to issue one more opinion that supports our motives, we'll get what we want. And again, I say good luck to you. You're trusting in something that has a vested interest in making sure that never happens. You're trusting in people that have shown they can't be trusted. I don't know how we solve this, but if we do nothing, I can tell you what's going to happen. If we curl up in a ball and pretend it's all over, well, it will be all over. 
I don't oppose those that want to fix the Constitution. I don't oppose those that want to enforce the Constitution. I agree with both. But I'm here to tell you, there's no reason why we can't do that and move forward on Texas. Because I'm going to tell you that I don't believe you're going to be able to get 36 or 38 states, two-thirds. You need two-thirds to ratify. You're not going to get two-thirds to agree on anything that would be positive. I just don't see it. Now, maybe we'll be fortunate and some people will self-segregate. You know, all the leftists will move to the leftist states and those of us that are not leftists will be left in the remaining states. Okay. But let me give you something to consider here. There was a novel written, I don't know, 20 years ago by an author by the name of Mac, Matt Bracken. It was in his Enemies uh, trilogy, right? The first one was um, Enemies Foreign and Domestic. And then it was um, The Reconquista was the second novel. And I don't remember all the details behind it, but basically they took over New Mexico. There was another novel I read uh, about that same time period where there was an intermountain state that declared English was the only language permissible. And again, in this novel, New Mexico said, okay, fine. We're going to require Spanish as the only language. This stuff can be done. I would not be a fan of either of those outcomes, right? I think New Mexico is an integral part of what makes up these United States. But as you continue to import hundreds of thousands, if not a couple of millions of people from south of the border, they're no more committed to these United States than they were the country they came from. So why would it surprise you if they want to separate? Why would it surprise you if they want to alter the makeup of that government? Would, would we oppose them going their own way? Well, yeah, actually, a lot of people would. But if that's what they want, if they want to exercise their right to self-determination, particularly if it benefits Texas, right? Oh, fine. You want to do that? Go your own way. We're going to go our own way, too. And while we're at it, you know, California is going to go its own way. I don't see this as the end of the world. You know, if we were really truly living in a federal nation, right, a federalist system, each state would be able to have quite a bit of sovereignty and live the way it wants to live and run this state the way they want to run it and still come together on the big issues, the foreign issues, the um, foreign policy issues, the and they would have free trade amongst them. But that's not what our government is right now. And if nothing else, pushing towards Texas causes them to reevaluate how they treat the individual states. I mean, even those of you that don't want to leave, can you at least acknowledge there's a benefit from that? That's a bargaining chip? I mean, even a guy I know that was running for Congress acknowledged that. Well, I'm not sure that Texas is the right answer. I'm not sure that I'm really fully in support of it, but I do think it's a great bargaining chip. I do think it's something that we need to remind Congress about. We need to keep the feds at bay with the idea that we could do this if we had to. So let me ask you, Do you really think the right answer is to spend all your time poo-pooing an idea when you don't have a better one? Do you really think it's well-spent energy tearing down somebody else's ideas and motivations to improve the situation because you don't see it or you don't agree with it? Now, I know there's a certain segment of society. That's what they always do. I I, I mean, the reality is... You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with other people. If you think there's an issue or if you think there's a problem, you need to bring it to their attention. And, you know, well, I have this concern or I'm not sure how this would work out. The fact of the matter is I had the opportunity to do this. I don't know, six years ago or whatever, I ran across Daniel Miller and I discussed with him, you know, I'm support of the idea of Texas. I just don't know how it would work out in these practical ways because I have concerns about this, this, and this. And the guy without missing a beat says, well, we could do this, we could do this, or what about this? There are answers. You just have to take the time, effort, and energy to research them or think about them. They're not that hard. If, if you're wanting to fail, if you're wanting to poo-poo it, it's because you're content with what we've got right now. And if you think that 
this attempt of mine was all-encompassing, you're wrong. It's not. It's very limited because, quite frankly, 10% of my time at most is what I put into Texit. But I just happen to know a guy. His name is Daniel Miller. And I'd say probably close to 90% of everything he does is Texit related. Oh, and guess what? We've got him coming to McKinney. That's right. On February the 14th. That's two weeks from now. He's going to be here. We're going to be at the Redemption Point Church, downtown McKinney. That's 107 East Lamar on February the 14th. And he is going to be there to talk about the Texas Constitution and how and why Texas works with the Texas Constitution. Oh, and by the way, he'll be there to answer the naysayers. He'll be there to have dialogue with people that have questions because this is his bread and butter. This is what he does. So you don't have to take my word for it. You you don't have to be lost and sad because you can't see it. The guy that can answer 90% of your questions is going to be right here in town, in Collin County, in two weeks. So, yeah, I guess some of this was all leading up for that promo, right? But that's not really the goal here. The goal is you need to be willing to engage and accept ideas that maybe you weren't comfortable with on the onset. I'm a convert. I admit it. I poo-pooed it 10 years ago. I mean, I liked it in theory, but I just had doubts. And six years ago, I'm not opposed to it, but I just don't know how it would work. And now it's like, I'm not opposed to it. And I can see how it might work, but it's going to require some effort. It's going to require me to do something more than sit at home. It's going to do something more than being a keyboard warrior. So let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you think our country is worth fighting for, if you think Texas is worth fighting for, take the time, come pay us a visit. We're going to be there. We want, we want to see you. We want to meet you. We will have other opportunities. If Texas is not your thing, hey, there's plenty of other things going on in the state of Texas or in these United States that we can plug you in on and give you an opportunity to advocate for the things that are important to you. So come and see us. And with that, <laughs> this was today's episode of According to Callus. And until Friday, I will see you on the other side.